Now, when we think about unique web designs, we're usually thinking about the web version. In fact, with a site like this one with nicolomiranda.com, his portfolio, we have this amazing layout and elements that make it feel like a real newspaper. And this has won a ton of awards and it's a very well-known site. But when we go into the mobile version, we see that the layout starts to feel a little bit different. We still have those elements, that kind of paper effect that we get with this entire site, but the layout starts to change dramatically. We start seeing more of a unified layout. We start to see stacking happening a lot more. So in this video, we're going to take this design that we rebuilt in Figma last time and convert it into a mobile design using the same elements that we see in front of us. I recommend that if you haven't seen the last episode of the series that you go ahead and check that out because it's going to be kind of confusing understanding what we did here, how we even did it. So let's get into it. Now, one thing to notice is that when we rebuilt this site using Figma, we did so only in the desktop version. And I got a lot of comments asking me to do it for mobile as well, or asking me how I would do it in mobile. So this is my personal take. You guys can find the original designers file in the link in the description and also the file to this if you guys want to check it out and play around yourself. So these are all the assets that we have here. We have this absolute image wrapper in the background. We have the content itself, which is within a max width container. We have the top frame, the bottom frame. And then within that, it's pretty much the same stuff. It's just content and content and content pushed around and moved around in a specific way. But that is the bulk of it. We have content that is sitting in the forefront and then content that's sitting in the background. And within that, we can kind of choose where we want this design to to be. Now, one of the things that we're going to do in mobile is we're going to start messing around with the padding that we have right off the gate here. So I'm just going to do 24 or something similar, just something that is smaller in size so we can start to scale it down. And for the frame, I'm going to choose just the iPhone 14 here. And we can see that that already did a lot. But if I go into x-ray mode, we'll see that it didn't really do anything. We just hid the content. And the reason why the image in the background moved alongside it is because the constraints here are set to the center. So no matter where this goes, the image stays centered, which is fantastic for us. But actually, before we go into the mobile version, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this content to be what I would want it to be anyways in the mobile version. So if I set this frame to auto layout, we see that the image goes into the forefront and now we can kind of play around with what we would actually do here. In terms of hierarchy, in terms of what people are actually there to see the site, it changes dramatically when you go from desktop to mobile. Now mobile is a massive market, so it's really important to take these things into consideration. But the way that we're going to do this is going to be something similar to this. So usually we have our main image either on the top or on the bottom of our hero section on mobile. That kind of depends on what you're really showcasing. If it's very important for the user to see the image when they are arriving at the screen, it's something very critical. Maybe it's an app or a SaaS or something that they need to see what it is. Then it makes sense to showcase it, but sometimes it might make sense to push it a little bit further down. In this case, for the sake of the design, we'll leave it there, but sometimes do know that it's not really necessary. So here's my take on the design for mobile. We're going to take the image and make it part of the design without being absolute. Maybe we can push it to the back, but I don't think necessary in this case. We're going to have this future for development company be our H1 or it is our H1. We see how that has to have its own hierarchy. It needs to be the most important thing because it's the biggest text It's what we want to showcase it. And then in my opinion here, the order of hierarchy is going to be number one or two. So it's kind of like the button, the CTA under that, and then number one or two as well. And I think this is going to be left under the fold here. I don't think that it's the most important thing. And that's another concept that we need to keep in mind when we're moving things into mobile is that not everything needs to be shown in mobile, as we saw with our previous example on Niccolo Miranda's portfolio, not everything needs to be visible at all times, the animations, the effects, it's not all supposed to be there in mobile. So we kind of need to reduce that. So in this case, I'm going to have this be the buttons. I'm just going to make this green so we get an idea of that. This can be the know what we are doing thing. And then the utmost experience development. I don't really think we need it. And if we did, it would probably go under the fold anyways. So let's go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller so we can kind of get an idea here. This can be green. So you guys can kind of get an idea there. So we have the main image, we have our H1, we have the buttons here or our text. If we wanted to kind of switch those up, we could just do that. And then we have either the button or the text, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and do that. We have to turn this into the iPhone 14 frame again. And now because it's not absolute, things are going to start to get a little bit messy. So let's go ahead and just move this up so we can see where it is. And then the max width here, I'm going to go into the x-ray mode. So we have a full idea of what we're doing here. So in this case, we're just going to move this right up. And the easiest way to do this is if you are using auto layout, which I recommend for things like this, 
It's just that easy to move it up or down and you have the content directly where you want it to be. So remember I said this one is not gonna be important to us, so I could either hide it or just delete it. I'll hide it for now so we can still see it in the X-ray mode. Actually, that'll make it more confusing. I'll just get rid of it. And then for this, for some reason it's fixed, let's make it hug. This is also hug for now, I think, which I think is okay. This should be fill. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to reduce the space that we need to take up for this content so we can move this bottom frame up. And now we see that we are already making a lot of progress in terms of the layout. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way of the desktop there so you can see a little bit more. So let's go ahead and reduce this. I'm just going to use the K here, hold option shift, and we can change the size of that pretty easily. We can see that the text is starting to creep up on us here. So let's go ahead and make that smaller as well. Now, the easy way to do this in something like Webflow or Framer, if you guys use Framer, would be just to change it on the lower breakpoints using either REMS on Webflow. So that is something that you guys need to keep in mind here. It's important to know what your design is gonna be like when you're developing it so that you can prepare for it in the larger breakpoints. So in this case, I'm just gonna use scale to reduce the size here and make sure that our assets stay the same dimension that we want it to. I'm gonna make this into eight pixels of spacing. We bring it up. And here we can start to play around with text size. So with text size, it's important to keep in mind that we are in mobile and in mobile, it's easy to get carried away with smaller sizes, but remember that it still needs to be legible. So I'm gonna use 16 pixels for this one and we can just do 13 or 14 for this one. So we see that in this case, we already have all the content that we need, but now we need to actually make it look and feel decent. So let's go ahead and ungroup this from the top left, just so we have it in its own container. We can move this to be a fill container so that the text itself moves all the way to be filled just like this. And now the text is just gonna wrap all the way into the edge of the breakpoint. So here we can do the same thing by increasing the size of our text. And we can either do that or just use the scale tool, but I'm not gonna do that apparently. I think that's a bad idea. So we can just go with fill, make our text size a little bit bigger, maybe Spacing could be about 120, maybe 110. And in this case, it is important to keep in mind that mobile design standards do exist. But for this example, we're kind of gonna go by eyeballing it here and just seeing what we can do with the content that we have here. Now, just seeing the content as the way it is right in front of us, I think that there are a couple of things that we could obviously improve on. For one, we might not really need this asset here, or if we do, we can maybe get rid of the absolute positioning and just move it above, either have it by the side or just right under it, just like that, and that might be maybe the logo, maybe something that they use every day. So we can go ahead and start to play around with this here. So in this case, I put it all into an auto layout. And by doing that, we can move this up so we can start to see some of the content underneath the image here. And in this case, what we're seeing here is that the H1 obviously has the most attention, but then when we go under the H1, I don't think that the buttons here make the most sense. It almost feels like an accent thing or something after the text. So we're gonna move that under the text here. And remember when I said that we don't really need to see absolutely everything in the mobile, we can go ahead and hide this as well right there. And we can convert the participants here into a button or something of that sort. So let's go ahead and make this into its own design here. And using the parent element, we can move the buttons under there. So what we can do here is we can get rid of all of the different tags that we have in this case, such as branding agency, things like that. And we can leave the learn more and maybe something like all services. So in this case, in the mobile specifically, the user is gonna be led onto a different page, maybe a different section on the homepage. And that way they can learn more about the services. But the point is not to overwhelm them with all the different options directly on the hero. They can learn more about it further on in the homepage. So in this case, this is something I would do in desktop. So we have two side-by-side -side buttons, but in mobile, it is usually a better idea to convert them to be vertical, fill, and then the buttons themselves are also fill using the center to be the text here. Now let's make sure that the text itself makes sense, something like 14 pixels I usually like to work with, and then we can give it a decent sizing as well. That way we have enough spacing to control what text we actually wanna add in these buttons. So that concludes what I would personally do with a design like this when bringing it down into mobile design. We got rid of quite a few things, but that is important when we're scaling down into the smaller breakpoints. If we go from tablet, it starts to get a little bit more similar to the desktop, and then horizontal mobile gets a little bit more similar to mobile. So there's a breakpoint in there where you kinda need to start deciding, okay, what is critical to to the user, what is actually important to the UX here. And in this case, I decided to stick with the H1, this little asset thing that I'm not sure, it might be important to the company, it might not be, but I decided to keep it in. The image, obviously, we also kept in this text, but we got rid of the participants and we also got rid of the utmost experience for development. Now, we could also get rid of this text here and just keep this kind of text, something like this. 
That way we minimize it even more, but that is up to the designer, that's up to the UX and to actually think what's gonna be the most important thing here. Then we minimize these buttons, all these different options to be just two, learn more, and then all services. With that being done, we kept a lot of the similar styles here. I'm gonna upload this to the same exact community file so you guys can see everything that I'm doing here and just replicate it yourselves on your own accounts. It'd be great if you guys shared it with me as well so I can see some of the progress that you guys are making, which is incredible. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about any of my choices, any of my ideas here, just let me know down below and I'm free to answer any of them. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.